World Championships are coming up in a little over a week. In St. Nyman just needs to remain error free. He was as strong as he is. No chance. Ooh. Oh, and he goes down. He was very fast Into in the training. Netting, and Stephen Nyman when he was holding the lead on the course. Wow. Stephen Nyman was long standing long up flight. following the crag to take him off the hill. Oh, man, that was a heavy, heavy fall. The greatest fear I think anybody can have is the fear of failure. Like in, in life, in anything, it's the fear of failure. If it's, if it's me not providing for my daughter, if it's me not being fast at skiing, um, that's, that could be the biggest limiting thing for a lot of people. Garmisch was wild because I had great training runs. I saw what I needed to do. I was, uh, I knew I could do really well. And uh, I was doing really well. And that jump, I kind of warned the, the, the fist guys about it and the safety guys. I said, this is a little too big. And they said they knocked it down. But the moment I took off, I saw I was going all the way down to the flat. And I didn't try and land it. I knew I had to kind of disperse my weight. And I flopped down. And it's when I hit the net is when my knee went. I, I got up. And I stood up, adrenaline's amazing, because I, I stood up and I was like, oh, I'm fine, I, I don't need a heli, okay? And then I shifted to get my ski and my knee just buckled. And I was like, nah, get the heli. <laughs> and right then, that's when I was like, all right, what do I gotta do? The crash actually didn't look that bad to me. It looked okay, but then when he went to stand up, he kind of stumbled and something was obviously not right. And then I heard the helicopter behind me fire up. I mean, any time an athlete goes down, I mean, you just, you're heartbroken. Uh, you know, you spend so much time with these guys and you love them to death. And when you see someone get injured, it just, it, it hurts. It hurts your gut, it hurts inside you. Um, you know, first instinct is always like, okay, what can we do to, on the hill? And immediately to make sure that the athlete's safe. It changes the dynamic when you have someone that everyone looks up to is no longer leading the charge. Having that happen to your captain for our team was not only devastating for him, but it was also devastating to our team. Injury is part of any athlete's career. And one thing, I mean, Steven's had lots of injury and lots of seasons where he's either missed the season or been injured throughout the season. You know, we know we're gonna get injured at some point in our careers, but there's this weird trick you can play in your mind that tells you it's not going to be you. I imagine a soldier going to battle says the same thing. The timing of this crash was especially difficult to swallow because Stephen was winning to that point in the day, um, in that race, and then he also was well positioned to podium in the next five races of the season. He had podiumed in those same races the year before, and if he had had that shot, he could have been contending for the downhill title, and that's his lifelong dream since he was a little kid. I mean, any time I see an athlete go down, especially a friend like Steven, um, it sucks. You know, you, you, I, I, can, I can know exactly what's going through his head and how his body feels. I've had the same surgery a couple times, you know, and especially for a guy like that who had the best season the previous season um, and is going to an Olympic year. I've torn my Achilles, I've broken five or six ribs, broken my hand, broken my legs twice, but this is probably the most traumatic injury I've had. I'd say the strengths are is he's extremely physically fit. So I mean that 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 is ingrained deep into his, you know, central nervous system and his physio physiology. So when you've got a, a tremendous base of aerobic conditioning, tremendous base of, of connective central nervous connection, that's gonna come back much, much faster than if he didn't have that base. What I keep thinking about is my understanding of skiing right now is that it's all time high. And I don't think I need all that skiing that I used to need in the past. Um, 
I just need to bring my body back to a good place to where I know I can ski with it. And once I'm there, I think skiing will come quite quickly and I'll be ready to go. Steven's not a guy that needs a lot of volume based on his age and his experience of downhill. Um, but he is gonna need some of that wind in his face and it is gonna take some time to be comfortable again in that place. Whatever, whatever setbacks we have, we have to really address those at that moment. The injury that I sustained just turned out to be a lot more complicated than, you know, it's just a broken leg, right? So I was in surgery that right away. It was a struggle, like three years of uh, pain and fighting the current. Mental approach is, 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 a, is really important. You know, you can go to some dark, dark places in your own mind. The mental side of coming back from an injury, without a doubt, that, they're, that, that is deep inside their head. And um, some athletes are able to overcome that without, without any issues. Some it lingers on for over a long time. The hardest day was February 12th. It's Stephen's birthday. He was about five days post-op at that point. And the World Championships downhill in St. Moritz had been moved to that day. In 2015, he missed the medals at World Championships by four one hundredths. So it's his birthday. He was on the couch in incredible pain. He could have punched something. He could have burst into tears. He could have blamed somebody. But instead, he kept himself busy by having his teammates send him their video and coaching them from the couch. And he just found ways to support from afar and stay engaged and he just focused on the next steps. He never let it get to him. Having a family is uh, pretty inspirational. I, I really enjoy being a dad. Yeah, Garmish happens and Charlotte is pregnant and now we actually have our baby daughter, Nell Motes Nyman. It's just much more meaningful and special. I feel like there's just a uh, it's not just me setting out to do what I want to do. I have a team behind me, and uh, I hope I'm still doing this when my daughter's old enough to really realize what I'm doing. To win a title, it takes the equipment, your body, a little bit of luck. They all have to come together, and I just hope that he can get that shot. I know I can come back. I just need to put in the work, and the Olympics is a big goal of mine, so. Um, I know I can do well on that course, and there's a lot of motivating factors right now. The first step to get back on snow is just to progressively overload the body in that environment. Um, so it's real slow. It's day on, day off, maybe two days on, a day off. I mean, much less volume of skiing than an athlete typically does. Probably one of his biggest weaknesses is, is that he wants it too much. The tough part about this season is that the Olympics are coming up. I have to be ready for the games. People are watching, everybody's watching. The pressure is much bigger. Uh, you can treat it like any other race, but it's not really any other race. It's, it's the biggest race you'll ever compete in. I know that he has it in him to, to get back where he was. And so we all, we all believe in that. And we're just sort of waiting for that day to come and it might be soon.